you need to make sure that you can tell me if the person is capable of more than one trip. So I'm just going to kind of go through these. You can write them in as much detail as you want. But basically, if you shift uh, your graph C units up, then you're going to have a number added or subtracted outside. So this is how the book writes it. I like to give you a real example. So I could say like h of x equals x cubed plus 4. I'm just going to take the normal x cubed graph and shift it up 4. Am I going to know? 
know any of the place that uh, that you didn't act like her instead of oh, that's very good about it. Um, instead of doing it that way, I'm not. I'm okay with it. But if it says describe the transformation, then um, no, the same at all. Are you with me on that? The shape. That's why I, uh, in section one three, I want you to know the shapes. I want you to know what they look like because it makes that thing a lot easier. Love this.
I see on my I'm not doing it <laughs> Uh, and the two is not, I kind of should have just done square root, but I have the two outside of the square root, okay? Can I throw it? I've got the one here. Um, functions that are already um, symmetric with the y-axis, putting a negative in there isn't going to change anything. Like x squared, if you put negative x squared, it's going to be the same graph because it's already reflected like that. Um, but that's why I picked this one. So again, let's just graph both of these, practice graphing our transformations. Let's just kind of see what happens when we switch these values. So negative outside reflects in the x-axis, and negative inside reflects in the y-axis. And plus I put the plus 2 here. What, what also happens with that? It's also going up 2. Um, so if I just graph this one, Again, you shouldn't have to make x-y charts every time, but I want to kind of show you what's happening in this one. Um, you can pick whatever you want for x, but it makes sense to pick um, plenty squares. So if I plug 0 in, it's going up 2, so now I get 2. If I plug 1 in there, um, 1 plus 2 is 3. And if I plug 4 in there, uh, 2 plus 3 is 4. And what kind of shape is this going to look like?
take that parabola and it's going to stretch it by a factor of three, which means it's going to be three times as thin. Remember, you go over one, up one. You're going to have to go over one, up three now in order to, to get that value. And a shrink, uh, sometimes they call those compressions, so it kind of squishes it down. Um, that's if it's less than one. I don't mean like a negative number, because a negative would be a reflection. I mean like a fraction. So that would be like if I had one half the absolute value of x. Again, it's on the outside. That's how I know it's vertical. And because that's a, a number smaller than one, a fraction, that means it's going to actually kind of shrink that graph down. Okay. And now let me write, I'll let you write these out, and then we'll talk about them, because the, the, this book likes to write horizontal as x divided by c. And, um, as a fraction, and so the rules seem like they switch. Again, I don't care as much that you know when it's stretching and when it's shrinking, which means you don't have to stress that much about this part. But I do want you to recognize that a horizontal stretch or shrink, the number's inside the function. That's the difference. Vertical, it's outside. Horizontal stretch, um, if c is greater than 1, it's inside the function, so that would be like g of x, um, the square root of x over 3. Oh, that's kind of weird. It goes back there, but that's okay. So it's horizontal because it's in the function itself. And this seems like c is not bigger than 1, but it is because if c is bigger than 1, then you're going to just have a strong bottom that's bigger than 1. So it kind of looks like it's a fraction in there. But that's a stretch. And a shrink. Uh, horizontal is in there. If C is less than 1, and we just talked about dividing by fractions, if you divide by a fraction, you're really multiplying by its reciprocal. So let's see if I can write this the other way. What if I said, um, we'll say x over 1 half squared. So I'm never going to leave it like that because dividing by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2, or 2x two quantity squared. Again, the 2 is inside the function, so we can say that that's horizontal. Uh, last year, Philip, Philip likes to uh, remind you that you could, like some things you could be uh, horizontal or vertical, depending on how you want to say it. Some horizontal shrink, shrinks are the same as a vertical stretch. It's true. If you really want to think that much about it, it really is true, which means if I ever ask you to tell me what's happening, there's more than one answer sometimes. But here's the big thing I want you to know. If it's vertical, it's outside the function. If it's horizontal, it's inside the function. Okay? I won't mark you wrong if you mix up the stretch and shrink because it's a bit confusing sometimes. But I want you to know vertical is outside, horizontal is inside the function. So let's look at a couple of these, and I think that I'll be done for today. This is good. I say uh, the best thing about transformations is that you don't have to make an XY chart. On the stretches and shrinks, sometimes it's not a bad idea at least to see what's happening. Sometimes you can see a pattern uh, and you can do it without an XY chart still. Uh, but these are the ones that sometimes I say, let's just check and see what's happening. So I think I picked the absolute value of x now. Okay. So now this one says, let's use the absolute value of x to uh, graph c. And I just wrote compare the graph, which means uh, tell me what's happening. And again, especially on this one, I'm going to graph both the original one and this one. Um, and you're welcome to do that or not do that. So just so you can kind of see the difference. But because this is outside, I know outside is vertical. Uh, and that one is a vertical stretch. You could just say a vertical transformation has no thing in that. Let's just say this thing is just a vertical stretch. Uh, I think there's someone 
it's being labeled them, right? Like this is called Epibank, this is called Acrobank. So if you're gonna graph more than one graph on the same graph, make sure you label it so you know which one's which. I know which one's which. This is the parent function, so I don't have to think to graph that. I know it's that lovely V-shaped graph. On this one, we're just multiplying that by two. So when I plug zero in, I'm still going to get zero. And when I plug one in, I'm stretching it by a factor of two. So when two is going up to one, I'm going to multiply that by two. If there was a three in front of it, I'd go to three. If there was a seven in front of it, I'd go to seven. Um, right, a factor of two. Now when I plug two in, normally I go up to two, but I'm multiplying by two. So that's going to add more up to four. The shape has changed now. That's sort of a negative one third there. This one is going to be a vertical shrink. Um, what's the negative in front mean? It's also flipped over. So this one's going to be opening down and also is going to be um, a vertical shrink. So I'm going to say reflect in x axis and It says describe this information. That's what it means. What? Um, if it says describe this information, I really want to use the reflect. Okay. So I'm gonna do the regular one again just because I want you to see what's happening. You don't have to do it random. You can pick whatever you want. Like you can pick one here and you can get negative one third. But to me it makes sense to pick numbers that divide into three nicely. So if I pick zero, I'm still gonna get zero. I'm gonna pick three because three times negative one third is negative one. If I pick six, six times negative one third is negative two. So don't feel like you have to always pick like one, two, three. I know because it's the same over here, right? Uh, I'll plug it in. This is negative one, four, five, six, negative three. It's still supposed to be a V-shaped graph, but I've uh, vertical shrink. If you take something and you shrink it down vertically, it's actually going to kind of spread it out. That's what I meant by a vertical shrink. Good argument. Because sometimes the horizontal stretch, if you were just looking at the graph. Um, Again, if you don't remember what these look like, there are square roots on there, there's quadratic, there's absolute value, those are kind of the favorite ones to pick. Um, go back to, to section 1-3 when we wrote out those 10 uh, functions, kind of just more practice uh, with that. Questions about that? I believe uh, we're only doing one day on this. This is homework 1-6, let me figure out which one to make sure that. So every year there are people that graph all of these, but just so you know, the first three directions say just describe 
Describe how you would do this rap. If me and you would say, you down three, just like in the New York Jackson, we need to write seven, right? You don't have to actually graph them. If you want to graph them, you can, but it does not, uh, you do not have to graph them until you get to 21, 22, or 23. And the directions on those do say, get F, G, and H by hand, support your answers with the grapher. You should just be graphing them, right? And if you have a graphing calculator, which is going to be a new test, you should just be graphing those. You just get the other one in the back of one. Um, I say graph all three on the same graph. You want to make sure seven graphs you can. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk about uh, a couple of them tomorrow. But I think those are the only ones you have to graph. For 47 and 48, you're writing an equation. And 51, 52, you have multiple choice. There's only three of them.